In this next section, I want to talk about movement. And I'm going to compare movement in general with exercise. Vigorous exercise, formal exercise, where you go out and you do 30 minutes of yoga or 45 minutes of jogging or whatever, that's important. But it's even more important that you're getting regular movement throughout your whole day. We need to avoid long periods of being sedentary. Our bodily functions, like our insulin levels and our brain function, change simply by sitting longer than 20 minutes. It's recommended that you set a timer to remind you to get up and move. Um, you, 20 minutes is the goal. No longer than 20 minutes to be just sitting in sedentary. I happen to set a timer at work for a thousand seconds. It's just something my mentor did and I thought it sounded great to have it be a thousand seconds. And that's 16 minutes and 40 seconds. But you can make it simple and do every 15 minutes, every 20 minutes, whatever works for you. But when that timer gets off, that's your cue to stand up and move. Um, I sit at a lot of Zoom meetings and even if I'm on Zoom, if there's a lot of people on it, I'll actually turn my camera off for a minute and I'll stand up and do some stretches. If I'm on <clears throat> some type of call where I can't do that and I have to be on camera, I'm actually having a conversation, I might do some stretches with my feet or you can even, people can see you stretching. I mean, it's not like it's a terrible thing, but do some movement. It could also be a cue to just reset your posture and take some deep breaths. Studies have shown that exercise is as effective as Zoloft in reducing depression. It gives you a 12-hour mood boost, and the opposite has also been shown to be true. Not exercising is a depressant. Researchers brought uh, exercisers into a lab, and they paid them to not exercise. They paid them for one week to be in the lab and be sedentary. They reported increased feelings of anxiety, fatigue, and hostility within one week. Their life satisfaction rating um, was 31% lower than when they started. So some simple things to do. You can increase your steps simply by measuring them, by having a pedometer, um, that, something that's doing your step count, because anything you measure improves. Take a walk. If people walk less than 5,649 steps, it's very precise, they're more prone to depression. The average American, however, takes about 4,500 steps on an average day. I know on a day when I have a lot of meetings at work, I get even less than that. So get out and get your steps in. Your movement matters. Our physiology, our physical health drives our mental health. Physiology drives psychology. Your body was made to walk and to move, not to sit like a lump in your chair. Look for additional opportunities to move. Can you take the stairs rather than an elevator? Can you park farther away? Can you do like what I said, little small exercises at your desk or some um, stretches in between your work? Think about micro movements. I, I talked a little bit about it already. Your posture, have reminders to improve your posture when we sit all curled up you know hunched over a cell phone we we get neck and back problems and that translates all the way down throughout our whole body so pay attention to those mi micro movements and reset your posture throughout the day i know they make little devices now that can remind you to sit up straight i think that might be a good idea for me someday um when it comes to exercise, most of us are under training. It is a problem to be over training as well. You have to find the right balance between recovery and training. A quote by Aristotle says, both excessive and insufficient exercise destroy one's strength. And both eating and drinking too much or too little destroy health. Whereas the right quantity produces, increases, or preserves it. So it's the same with temperance, courage, and other virtues. This much is clear in all our conduct. It is the mean to be commended. So there's a happy balance where your body's going to be happy. But overtraining is not the problem for most of us. Consistency is the key. You can get your workout clothes on and show up and at least have the minimum to do that, even when you don't feel like exercising. Make it a tiny habit. It'll grow. We often wait for motivation to strike us before we start exercising again, or we say, I don't know why I, I just can't make myself do it. Um, but that consistency 
getting your body in that habit of showing up is what gets the motivation kick-started. I, uh, before I went through my cancer treatment, I was doing 45 minutes to an hour Peloton rides a few times a week and then strength exercises on the days that I wasn't riding the bike. Once I had treatment, I ended up having my treatment and then I got COVID and then I got influenza and all of those things just felt like it took me down a notch and I, I really lost all my stamina to exercise. I started to tell myself a story that getting on the bike for five minutes wasn't good enough. Like it was really disappointing to look at my tracker charts. I like to keep track on a chart how many miles I get and to look at how far I, I felt like how far I had fallen. Um, but I started with just five minutes. I wanted to do five minutes a day on the bike to start to get my stamina back and it worked as I started doing five minutes I realized maybe I can do six maybe I can do seven to the point where now I'm doing 30 minute rides don't let your brain tell this story of shame that it's not good enough like my brain tried to do have a voice of compassion on yourself the same kind of compassion you would have for anyone else who is trying to work on improving themselves then you need to find something you enjoy find joy in movement i used to really have to make myself exercise until i got my peloton and i found um i really enjoyed it i enjoyed the trainers i enjoyed the challenge i enjoy just about everything about it um so figure out what you like maybe it's jumping on the trampoline with your kids make it maybe it's taking a dance class maybe it's playing pickleball you have to find what it is that will will keep you moving and then you have to find the right why. Studies show that people have that have concrete reasons to exercise will exercise 30% more than those with abstract reasons. So an abstract reason what would be, I wanna exercise to live longer, or I wanna exercise to lose weight. Those are the goals that are like way down the road benefits. If you have a why that's a today benefit, for example, for me, it's I wanna feel good today. I know on the days that I get up and I do exercise before I go to work, I show up at work more ready to work, more focused and more energized than on the days that I don't. So that goal will increase the chance that I will actually exercise. One of our most popular excuses for not exercising is I don't have the time, but I'm going to challenge you that you can create the, the time. You can probably find 15 minutes of time where you're mindlessly scrolling or you're watching just one more episode of something on the TV and you can swap 15 minutes of that for exercise. So challenge yourself to find a few minutes to do it. You are your most valuable asset. This body, we have one body. You want to take care of the things that are going to help you get energy and get your mind right. You are worth the investment. I'm going to guess that 15 minutes or an hour of scrolling on your phone or watching TV um, doesn't energize you. In fact, it's harder to drag yourself off the couch when you're doing that. But the exercise will energize you, and we talked about that 12-hour mood boost. You can try stacking your exercise with other things you're doing. For example, I combine in the summertime walking in the neighborhood with quality time with my son. We walk together and we talk and I often hear things from him that I wouldn't hear otherwise if we weren't doing that. I also get outdoor time and fresh air while I'm walking. Sometimes I combine other exercise like yoga, weightlifting, or if I'm doing a stretching routine with listening to a podcast or a training. Sometimes I can listen to a Zoom meeting while I'm on a walk or play a game of horse with my family. You can also make exercise a game. You can have charts. I like charts and stickers. Uh, you can do a map race where you, there's some websites you can go to and say, I want to virtually walk across the United States. And so every day your mileage that you do walking gets tracked on a map and you can see how long it'll take you to walk across the country. You can do things like don't break the chain where you're crossing things off every day and you don't want to miss a day. Um, competition with friends. My workplace has a wellness app that 
everybody can everybody can get on and we challenge each other either step goals or minutes of exercise or how much water can you drink etc um so you can make it a competition you can complete some sort of challenge try different things whatever works for you sometimes you might might not even realize that you're motivated by stickers until you try giving yourself stickers or a coloring page where you color in one part of a picture every day that you do exercise. So think about what is your minimum every day and set yourself a tiny movement goal. And we'll move on to the next module.